Hi, and welcome everyone to Whole Soul School and Foundation's Fireside Chats for January 2020. I want to wish all of our listeners a Happy New Year. My name is Marie Moeller, and I am an author, intuitive, and co-founder of Whole Soul School and Foundation. I am here with my co-host and co-founder, Lacey Frazier, who is a clinical psychologist by training and a practicing life coach, re-entry coach, and consciousness educator today. Our mission here at Whole Soul School and Foundation is to educate, enrich, integrate, and liberate the heart and soul in people worldwide. We also support projects, products, and philanthropic missions that are specifically designed to educate, empower, and inspire people whose lives have been impacted by incarceration. We hold a core belief that the conversation is the education. And we are dedicated to sharing this inspiration and these important conversations with our amazing listeners and audience here at Whole Soul School and Foundation to ignite your passion, freedom, purpose, empowerment, creativity, and personal transformation in 2020 and in this new decade that is now just beginning. So I first want to welcome Lacey to the conversation today. Welcome, Lacey. Hi, Marie. It's good to be back. Wonderful. It's good to be back and starting a new year of amazing conversations about our individual and collective quest for wholeness, happiness, health, wealth, and well-being in our world today. So this year, we're going to be focusing on James Redfield's The 12 Celestine Insights that we introduced in our November 2019 Fireside Chats a couple of months ago. But now in 2020, with so much change unfolding in our personal lives and in the world today, we feel it's a great guidebook for all of us to follow. So we're going to be spotlighting one of James Redfield's insights each month of the year for Fireside Chats and delving further into what it means to us and what gems that insight may hold for our listeners as well. So let's, let's do it. Let's get started. So Marie, I am so excited to be back with you for 2020 and back with Whole Soul School and Foundation. And I do, before we jump into the first insight, I want to tell our listeners a little bit about why we're kind of, we're sort of narrowing our focus this year. You know, we, with with last year in 2019, we did this sort of what I like to call this human to soul journey. And it was a big journey and we covered a ton of topics over the course of the year. And it really set the stage for spiritual, what spiritual awakening is and kind of how we journey from our, our human selves to being more connected with the universe and through quantum physics and connected with our soul and all of that. But it was it was really just little morsels in the end, right? Every month. Right. It was we, a broader perspective of the journey. But, but this year we can go deeper. Yeah. And bit. I think I think what we what we talked about was wanting to go deeper and more specific and a more and, and kind of more narrower in the depth rather than the breadth. Yes. And so out of all the topics that we covered, you you know, the Celestine Insights, the 12 Celestine Insights seemed like a perfectly laid out 12-point uh, plan in a way to to talk about over the course of the year. Right. So that's really why we've landed on on the 12 Insights. And so I let's start off with talking about the first the first insight. And okay. I'd like to, it, it's called a critical mass is sort of the name of the first insight. And it's, it's all about the concept of, of synchronicity. And I'm going to go ahead and just read this first insight and then we can jump off from there. Okay. So it says, a new spiritual awakening is occurring in human culture, an awakening brought about by a critical mass of individuals who experience their lives as a spiritual unfolding, a journey in which we are led forward by mysterious coincidences. And what I'd like to do is kind of have a conversation. If we were to really break down this particular insight, it would, I think, provide a real launching pad to continue our conversations about spiritual awakening and and that, that journey that many of us are on now. And really what this insight is saying is that there is a sort of mass awakening occurring, um, that people are waking up to who they really are. And so I thought we could break down this insight into parts. 
uh, and take it a little bit deeper than we did when we first talked about all 12 insights. Yeah, that sounds um, perfect. So first, let's talk about this concept of a, a spiritual awakening. You know, this this insight says a spiritual awakening is occurring in human culture. Well, what what really does that mean? Mm-hmm. Right? What do we mean by a spiritual awakening? Yeah. And I think, you know, in many ways, there's an increased awareness unfolding in many people on the planet of ourselves as spiritual beings. Are we really just these human beings? That's right. it. You know, and we're born and we have experiences and then we... we Die and it's we, over. And that's it. Yeah. And I think... I, we, is there more to us than that? And more and more people are asking this question. And more and more people are connecting to the fact that they that we, we have a soul, right? Mm-hmm. And that that soul is energy and that soul is connected to a more universal consciousness. And I think that's what's meant by a spiritual awakening, that it is in these times, mm-hmm. you know, who knows how, how, how many years we've been in this mass spiritual awakening, but I would certainly say it's been, you know... Accelerating uh, definitely. over the last many decades, yeah. for sure. Yep. Um, and people are becoming more and more aware of, of themselves as a spiritual being having a human experience rather than a human being kind of touching base with spirituality. From time you know? to time. Yeah. And yeah. that's different. That's different. It's a big shift. It it's is a, a big really shift. big shift. Um, so I would like to say that I think that that we are, um, our consciousness is rising, that we are having a increased awareness of both ourselves as a human being and ourselves as a spiritual being. Go yeah. ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, you know, and also for me, spiritual awakening implies that we've been sleeping. Yeah. So I think we've been sleeping to our spiritual selves. We've been, you know, sort of sleepwalking through our lives. And if you're someone who believes we just live one single lifetime and that's it, right, then that, that we've been even sleepwalking through that, that we've not been fully awake and in our power and connected to our divinity and our spirituality, which is where the expansion comes. It's where people can bring through remarkable innovations and um, creativity and creations and, um, you know, just people, innovators. You know, you think about Tesla and Einstein and creators today, authors, artists, they're, we're getting these insights from somewhere, right? right? And so some people would think it just happened. They just one day woke up and knew the formula and that changed how we, you know, understood science, right? Right. But in, in my world from, cause I am living in this kind of spiritual awakening consciousness. I don't, I'm not sleeping in this lack of awareness of all of us having these incredible talents and connected to something so much more, Mm -hmm. that there's so much more to us. I know now that there's so much more to each one of us. Whether we're all awake to it, that's what this first insight is about. So I want to go back to there are, there's many people on the planet and we've all had our experiences of sleeping, of not being aware of ourselves as these incredible divine beings with talents and eternal connections to something more than our limited human selves can be. Right. And there were little sprinkles of master beings that you they would pop up in our history books that one person out of millions would know that they were a spiritual being having human experiences. But the rest of the masses wouldn't know that. Right. And they'd all really want to listen to the one person on the planet that it seemed knew these things. Right. And we're all waking up that we all know these things. Right. We all know these things. And so the spiritual awakening is awakening to ourselves as so much more. And we're rising out of that little small perception of ourselves that we're these small little separated beings who live these small lives for just a short stint in time. And then that's it. There's so much more to discover about ourselves. And so I think the first insight is so exciting. And what makes it even more exciting is that many of us are starting to realize this at the same time. It's kind of a collective awakening. Well, it's a critical mass. Oh, it's a critical mass. <laughs> right, which is what, what he says in there. That this awakening has been brought about by a critical mass of individuals who experience their lives as a spiritual unfolding. You know, that that's this part we're looking at here. So, so that the amount of people collectively 
who are awakening from their slumber, right, right, are turning the tide, basically, right. from a planet of sleepwalkers, right, to a planet of awakened beings. Exactly, exactly. And more and more people are rising and awakening and starting that seeking process and asking, there's got to be more to life. There's got to be more to me. There's got to be more to all of this than I think we've been led to believe. And so this is the, these are the next inner steps, the next soul steps, the next steps of self-awareness that we're moving into. And I think I looked up the definition of a critical mass, which yeah. I thought was interesting. And it said the critical mass of enlightenment can be defined as the smallest number of awakened human beings whose collective influence can initiate a significant shift in global consciousness. Yeah. You know, so that's what's happened. And, and when you, you know, it it isn't, but you can go down any main street of any town nowadays and you will see what you will see a yoga studio right you will see a pilates studio you will see some kind of energy medicine practitioner and you might even see a sign for a psychic or a spiritual medium and and it's become more mainstream more mainstream on main street correct and when it's more mainstream on main street that means that more people are tuned into the same frequency exactly the same awareness at some level right yeah, it's so it is such an exciting time to be alive, and we're the participants in yeah. it. We're part of that collective consciousness. Yes. So each time one more of us wakes up, we're that much closer to remembering who we are. And the whole point is that hopefully we're going to way far outnumber. Now, I don't mean this in a competitive way, but that the consciousness on the planet is going to rise and there will be so many more spiritually awakened beings than there are people who are asleep and who are unconscious. And, and when that know. happens, yes, the world shifts drastically in all areas. Well, be- and I think that's what this entire new decade is about. Yes, I, I do think too. we are going to, you know, really see a very different humanity and a very different planet over the course of certainly the next 10 years. And really who we are today, it's January 9th, 2020, when we're recording this podcast. And by December 31st, 2020, there's going to be so much about us that's already going to have shifted. And you're going to see it not just in yourself, but around the globe. There's going to be so much change this year in 2020. So if there's anything that we need to get adjusted to, it's the concept of change, right? Yes, yes. Really, you know, I think I've received some messages myself about being extremely flexible this year in our thinking. When you are seeing these kinds of critical mass shifts in consciousness, that means also all the things that organized human consciousness are shifting. Yes. And so we are going to have to adapt and evolve and grow together as a humanity waking up together. Maybe some of the systems we have in place aren't really serving this new evolving consciousness that we're becoming. So as much as some people might say, I'm so ready for change. And then sometimes people say that and they don't realize it's a Be prayer. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> and a wish and an affirmation. Right. And when everybody's embracing change because we're tired of the old system that's not really serving all of us, it's only serving a few of us. Right. As more people rise in the collective to say, I want change. Well, change is change what is we're going to get. Change is what we're going to get. But I, but I think this time in humanity's history, it's it's going to change for the better. It's going to change in a way that um, that none of us living today remember ever seeing before. You know, if that makes yeah. sense. Like I think we're going to have a, a rise in vibrational frequency, and and I think the old ways, which are often very heavy and dense and earthbound are going to fall away. And yeah, a lot of the hardness of life and the struggles and the challenges, we're going to go through some in 2020. This is not just going to be easy street on right. main street. Right. Right. No, but I think if we're, if we start to understand what's happening and we develop a language for it, which is part of what we want to create here right. at Whole Soul School and Foundation is to help give you the language of what's happening inside you and what's happening inside a lot of people on the planet right now. When you understand what's happening, you have a better context for it and you can choose your response to 
to it differently and you can embrace the change even if there's some discomfort or some shifts that you have to make in your personal life to accommodate that evolution that's happening. Um, we can embrace it versus fear it. Absolutely. You know, and, and as we, in the name of sort of breaking down this insight, you've done a nice job of kind of of, of taking us to this sort of next concept, which is, for again, we're breaking down the insight. We talked about what we mean by spiritual awakening, and we've talked about what we mean by critical mass. And now I want to talk about this concept of spiritual unfolding and living our lives within the spiritual unfolding, which, which really is just what you're talking about. It's living in the flexibility of, of what is to come, of, being guided, yeah. Being go guided, ahead. and I was mm-hmm. going to say that your life is operating by a kind of divinely orchestrated flow. And most of us were not conditioned and raised in families or educational systems or lives that would have trusted that there was a flow, that we actually were led to believe that we had to work really hard and we had to like go to school and get these follow the rules and follow the steps. Absolutely. And have goals. We had to set goals and we had to work really hard to get to those goals. Right. And so somebody who finished high school might have the goal of getting their MD degree, right. right? Or a PhD. Does, I'm just using this as an example. It's not everybody's dream. But the minute they set that goal, they've got another eight to 10 years of schooling ahead of them to achieve that goal. That's kind of what we're talking about. The old ways are more of like that goal way off in the future. And then you slog away and you work really hard to get there. When you embrace words and even the new language of letting your life unfold, right? Letting Mm. your divinity emerge inside you and express as you. It's an unfoldment that happens through you. If we remember a little bit of Michael Beckwith, right? Remember, right? Life happens to you and then, right? You move to the next place of of it. it, And it it happens by you. So you're making it happen and then it happens for you. And so you're, you know, it's for your benefit. And then it starts to happen through you. And that's what we're moving into, actually. I think we're going to see this accelerate, Lacey, in 2020 and in this new decade, where things that are our best selves, our best aspects, more aligned with the greater and higher consciousness, where peace and harmony and collaboration and cooperation and where we're working as teams and coming together as parts of a whole is going to be the natural order of things and more the natural unfoldment rather than this bunch of separated parts that really have nothing to do with each other. Absolutely. And that's all part of this first insight is that we're coming together, we're waking up as a collective from the sleepiness to start to manifest and co-create together a better world. And it's accelerating. Absolutely. And, you know, as you, as you talk about the divine, the divine flowing through us, really what I believe as I interpret this insight, and as we talk about, you know, we are people now, or the people who are awakened, we view our lives as as a spiritual unfoldment, basically that energy, soul, universe, whatever we want to call it, we are co-creating. That's the ultimate partnership. The ultimate collaboration yes. is between us and the universe. And we are co-creating our reality through that energy, right? And so through this sort of unseen force, we're working together. Yeah. We're co-creating with this unseen force to create a plan, a path you know, a destiny for our life, a journey. Exactly. And, and that's really, as he, the, the, the tail end of this insight talks about a journey in which we are led forward by mysterious coincidences. Mm. And that's where the concept of synchronicity really comes in. And I just, I want to say that, you know, so to sum this to sum this insight up, basically, he's saying every, you know, we're having this mass spiritual awakening. And what that means is people are becoming more and more aware that they are these spiritual beings having a human experience and that they are, they are now um, living their life uh, with a conscious awareness of co-creating with the universe and realizing that everything in their life has meaning. Everyone they come in contact with has meaning. Everything that happens to them is significant. Every moment 
is meaningful. Every interaction, every exchange, every breath you take has meaning and life force in it. And the question that seekers begin to start to understand, just beginning to understand in this first insight, is how do I want to use that breath? How do I want to use that life force that's moving through me in the universe that I understand it's not just air? When we reduce breath to just being air and we don't understand that it's living energy in the universe, then that's how we're disconnected from every moment having meaning. And, you know, I always go back to Einstein, Tesla, a lot of these people who were tuned in, they were scientists, but they were tapped into this living conscious energy and they were trying to tell us about it. Well, they were trying to leave us these breadcrumbs because they understood that we're all one, that we're all part of this collective consciousness. They were tapped into it even then. And many were tapped to, into it even before. There's the poet Rumi that a lot of people quote from Rumi. He was very tapped into it. You know, this has been going on for centuries, but now many of us are waking up together. And, um, and we're really and I, living it, we're, you know. And we're really living it. And I just want to say, so now in the back end of this first insight, of as we break this down, I love when you're talking about this unseen force and that we're connecting into something more. One of the awarenesses that we start to have is that we are not alone. How many people, even if we're surrounded by people all day long, whether you're a teacher and you've got kids in your classroom or, you know, you're an, you're an employee in a company and there's 500 other employees with you at work, you could be amidst 500 people or 5,000 people, or we could be on a planet of seven plus billion people. And many of us could say sometimes that we actually can feel very alone inside ourselves. How can we be on a planet of that many? That's just human beings. That's not all the other creatures and living beings on this planet. How could we be on with all these other living beings on a planet and feel alone? It's because the consciousness that we've been living in in these past centuries of time, that's what the consciousness was. And on mass, we believed at some level, we believed together that we were separated. Yes. And we're waking up that we are not separated. We're actually not alone. And en masse, we're waking up. And en masse, we're waking up. Yeah, I and love that. It, it chills. It's so beautiful. And then this critical piece that you're talking about, we're presenting today, this first insight, is that we start to understand that we are led forward by mysterious coincidences. So that's the part of the first insight that I think gives me the biggest chills, because that's where the fun begins. Totally. That's totally where the, fun where the fun begins. And and I just want to say that, you know, this concept of mysterious coincidences, you bring up Einstein and 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 uh, Tesla and all these people, you know, the first person who coined this concept of mysterious coincidences was Car- Carl Jung, mm, the psycho right. the psychoanalyst. And he he described, he named meaningful coincidences he did, as synchronicity or synchronicity mm. means meaningful coincidences and meaningful is in quotes because really what he was saying is there are there is no such thing as a coincidence right because we're conditioned to believe they're occurring by chance right, right? exactly so as humans i'm going to you know in that same vein we're conditioned to believe life experiences are random with little to no connection between them Our human cells might describe coincidences as two or more experiences that coincide and look related, but aren't. We are conditioned to believe life experiences are random with little to no connection between them. Right. It's crazy. Right. I mean, now that I feel I'm, norm. you know, awakened and I right. and I know differently, it's so strange to try to remember a time in my life right. where I didn't know that everything was connected, where I didn't right. know that there were messages and everything and that the universe was communicating with me all the time. Right. You know? Um, so as we begin to, sp- you know, as we begin to awaken, we begin to pay so much more attention and we begin, and we begin to feel, you know, that something more purposeful and meaningful and guiding in nature is going on around us. Right. Right. And that's really the concept of synchronicity. And that's when we change our language. So whereas before we use words like coincidences, right? Mm -hmm. Carl Jung gives us the language of synchronicity. 
and we can start. And the minute we start using synchronicity and we start using words like unfolding, synchronicities unfolding, meaning unfolding in our lives, connections we see, and we make connections when we see the meaning in things that aren't separate. When our language is changing, it's starting to show that it's getting further inside us. It's a waking up inside us. We're starting to tune into the fact that life force and this interconnected universe is talking all the time. Yes. Even without words. Yes. Oh, mostly without words. Mostly without words. Yes. Exactly. Synchronicity is all about almost a wordless expression of connection. Yeah. And that's why when we were separated... All we had, the only way we could explain that was some kind of bizarre weirdness. Right. Right? It was, we acted as if that kind of living, that way of life is the anomaly and not the way things are. Right. And you can see when enough people point at that and say, yes, that is bizarre. That is the anomaly. That's not how things are supposed to be. And you raise generations after generation after generation believing that nothing's connected and that everything's separated and everything happens at random and by accident, right? Then you have everybody believing that. When you get enough people thinking it together, right. that becomes what is. And that's be- that becomes what conditions the next generations. Right. And the pendulum is swinging where people are starting to point at that very same thing centuries later and say, those two things are related. Those th- th- two things have meaning. Those two things are not random. In fact, those two things go together and there's some kind of universal consciousness connecting them. And that's when you bring in the Teslas and the Youngs and the Einsteins and, you know, Lynn McTaggart's and the Bruce Lipton's and the Greg Braden's and all these wonderful people um, sharing that they are in fact connect- connected and they're a living community. All these energies that we're talking about are part of one whole living community that's always talking with itself. Well, and I want to bring it more specific to the individual because okay. I, I, I think that what's so powerful when we awaken spiritually is we start to understand that we're being guided, mm-hmm. that we specifically, that I, Lacey, have a path and I have a destiny and that I play a role in listening for and paying attention to guidance to follow that path. Well, and that's how you can participate in not only your own awakening to these principles, but as you participate in yours, you are impacting everyone else. Yeah. And you're starting to help that global awakening process. Right. So we're going to bring it to the level of the individual. And every time the individual makes a positive change, they're that drop in the ocean. that's also affecting the entire ocean. Right. Exactly. Right. So if you you that ripple effect, that ripple effect. So if you are awakening and you are starting to understand synchronicity and you are starting to realize that everything has meaning and is guiding you, you need, it's time to start to pay attention to your world and to what's showing up in your world, right? Right. And we we have to stay in sort of a state of alert expectation uh, concerning what, what is it that we want in our lives and do we need help and, you know, how... This is where prayer comes in, and this is where we talk to the universe, and we ask questions, and we say, show me a sign, show me a way, give me a signal, right? And you begin to look for the signal. You say the prayer expecting that there's going to be a call and response, right? There's a call and response. It's breathing. It's in and out. You put out the call and the breath comes back in, right? And so it's the same thing. When we say that prayer and we say, show me a sign, should I stay in this job or is there something out there that's better and that's different for me, that's more aligned with whom I'm becoming? And you listen for those cues and you might... All of a sudden, a song, we'll talk about this, but a song on the radio will come, and it's a song of like, leave your job now, (laughs) right? And you're like, wait, I just said that prayer. Wait, I have the best story that I have to, and I think I might have shared this the last time in in November when we talked about it, but I have to share it again. Okay. I mean, we, you and I, you know, we live in this world. We live in this universe. We're always communicating with the universe, and there isn't a day There isn't probably six hours that go by without some sort of synchronistic event happening. Um, All the time. All the time. But I I have a couple 
a couple of stories that just really pop up as as profound. Um, right. One of them, I, I remember I was uh, driving my car and I had had some problems with my car and I was also kind of stubborn and I was going to, I wanted to see if I could figure out what was going on with my car without having to take it in the shop and pay all this money to get it paid for. And this is also early on in our journey, I want to point out to our listeners. This is at this awakening period where we're testing, where we're experiencing some of these synchronicities. We weren't full believers at that point. We were still just waking up. Very true. Somewhat skeptical, somewhat resistant. But we heard other teachers and speakers and, you know, thought leaders talking about these kinds of things. But I wasn't actually, to be honest, I wasn't even in the place where I was like necessarily listening that intently for an answer. So I, I just, I didn't even know to do that. Like, I just remember that I remember on a Friday, I remember that my car had like broken down and I remember thinking, okay, how, I just don't want to have to take this into the shop. You know, what could be wrong? And in the past I had fixed some things on my cars before. So, you know, I thought maybe it might be something I could do on my own. But in your thoughts and you're, you're somewhat aware, we, we were dabbling in some of these principles, but not at all practiced. No. And certainly not full believers at no. this point. No, And so I'm saying this is happening with your car and you're having these thoughts of like, I wonder what I could do. Or I wonder what it is. Right. I you wonder know, how I can fix these it. These are prayers. So you know, I'm going to interject right now and say, when you're thinking, gee, I wonder what that is. Like, I don't really want to take it into the shop. I wish I could kind of figure this out. Do it yourself, kind of, you know. And this is my human self. I wasn't saying, oh, God, help me. Tell me what's wrong. Wrong or no. universe, tell every me what's thought, wrong. Every thought is right. a prayer. It was just my own thought but at every, the time. And every thought is a prayer. <laughs> right. And so, and the universe is hearing that as kind of a command or a request to say, I need a little help here. Yeah. And so that's essentially, you sent out that thought form that had energy and magnetism and electromagnetism in it, not knowing that you were really doing that. Right. And it wasn't long. So No, it was us. the next day. I actually, I remember because I was on call at work and it was a Saturday and I had to go in uh, to deal with an emergency. And every sa- Saturday morning, I don't know if it's still going on, but back then, which was probably 10 years ago, there was a, a show on NPR called Car Talk. And it was two brothers who were car experts who were hysterical to listen to, and they would banter back and forth, and they would take calls from people. And with they, their car it, troubles? It, with their car troubles. And I <laughs> thought, it was so funny, I thought, gosh, you know, I should really call in there, haha. But I remember, I'm driving to work, and I'm listening to these guys talk, And all of a sudden, I'm kind of daydreaming, you know, and all of a sudden, I sort of tune in to the person who's calling, and the person who's calling is describing the exact same problem that was going on with my car. I mean, it was almost as if it was me calling and describing it. I mean, and you know, when you describe what's going on with your car, you sort of make noises and you tell them it, you know, it clicks and it clanks or it rums or it hums or, you know, you got to be creative when you're trying to get somebody to understand what your car does. And this caller was speaking. I mean, I can't, it was, it still to this day is so seared onto my brain, this, this situation. Yeah. The caller was describing exactly what was going on with my car. I paid attention to it. I knew at that point, I thought, my God, this is it. This is the problem. And so I remember I came home. I told you, I said, I think I know what's going on with the car. We do have to take it in. It's something I can't fix. And I made the decision to not tell the car repair place what I thought it was because I wanted to see just to kind of, you know, spot check. Have it validated. Right. Have it validated. Thank you. And, and sure enough, they came back and told me, oh, it's, it's blah, 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 which was exactly the diagnosis that the car, the car guys gave on the radio to the caller. But all initiated by your thought prayer that right. said, oh, I, so I know something's going on with my car. I wish I knew what it was, right? I wish I could fix this myself, right? right? All these are like two or three or four streamed prayers that happen in rapid fire succession that we right. all do. We all do these things. And then it was as if you didn't make that call into the that show, but another you, <laughs> like another soul in the oneness right. on this planet yes. was you yes. making that call in the synchronicity of you happening to be in your car on in that moment with your radio turned on tuned into that particular station at that time to hear that description of a car problem that was yours. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you just have to marvel. And, you know, they would, in this first insight, we're talking about noticing these mysterious 
coincidences. Right. And young, it sounds like, would call that a meaningful coincidence or synchronicity that was telling you that maybe a few more things are going on in this universe than you quite understood. And that was one of your make you a believer kind oh, absolutely. of experiences. And when you have enough of these string together that they can't be explained by mere chance, That's that they right. can't be like... 10 weird, bizarre coincidences. No, now you've had 30. Well, they're still coincidences. Maybe you might need 150 interesting coincidences before you might start scratching your head saying, I think there might be something to this thing called synchronicity, right? Right. Each of us is different. Some of us open and just start to really see it flow in our lives and we're more open to believing and recovering how it really could be here. And some of us are truly resistant and saying, it can't be. There's just nothing connects anything. I don't believe in that. I don't have a spiritual bone in my body, right? And we just resist. And it's okay, because if you resist, what resists persists. And what is absolutely going to happen is you're going to be shown synchronicity over and over and over again until you could do nothing but believe. Right. So either way, everybody has their path to get there, but we're all going to get there because it's also happening en masse. Yes. It's happening en masse. Yeah. So that was another great, that was a great story. Yeah. Yeah, and once you wake up to the this synchronicity and the energies of the universe and that we are the player in our own life in this way, you you have many of these stories and it's it's over and over again. Exactly. And, and they're so fun and life becomes magical. And so much more interesting and it becomes the meaning starts to come back in our life. And when you look at our world today that's struggling to find its connection, what we're what our our challenges are or what the toxicity is or what the dysfunction even or what's plaguing our humanity is that we are in this condition of separation that we've been trapped in for so long and everything seems random and no matter what you do some people end up with bad luck it seems completely random right and a few people have good luck and a few people struggle their whole lives and that's just the way that it is and when that's the world we've been conditioned to believe right? It's not fun. It's not magical. Right. And there aren't a lot of miracles to go around. Right. But when you start to realize that the universe actually works in an entirely different way than what we've been taught, we start to awaken inside ourselves first. And we start to see that there's a much greater connection between all things. And we start to pay attention to these mysterious coincidences. And even if you're somebody who's listening to this and you're kind of a doubting Thomas at the moment, right? Go ahead. It's okay to be a skeptic, you know, but you can say, I'm willing to see more, you know, coincidences that actually are synchronicity versus uh, random events that are just happening close together. So you can say to the universe, I'm willing, I'm willing to have you show me more synchronicity and see what shows up. Well, and in fact, this, this last sort of um, segment that I want to talk about is how synchronicity can, can work for you. Yes. You know, how can you engage it? so right. to speak. It doesn't, you don't just have to sit back on the couch and no. expect things to happen. You can actually talk to the universe and communicate and pay attention. Um, you become a participant in it and a partner with the universe. Right. Exactly. That's what starts to happen. Right. And, and, you know, James Redfield does a good job of talking about some ways in which we can engage the synchronicity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it usually happens in a, in a sequence. So, he talks about that first you, you, you may identify an intuitive thought or a hunch that suggests a particular course of action, you know, that's going to move your life forward. Um, And then when you follow the intuition and you take this course of action, you find yourself in a place where synchronicity occurs. So, you know, it's important to, in your awareness, to engage it and listen for those intuitive hunches and take those action steps to follow that hunch. And then the truth is, is that could take you down a road that doesn't feel so good or that, or that challenges you or, and it can also take you down a road that, that gives you the answer to something. And guess what? Either way, it was meant to be because either way you're learning. Well, and it was leading you to the same destination of of an awareness that you needed 
or an experience that you needed for your path. And we haven't talked about this too much, but Lacey, we did talk about um, the Celestine Prophecy, the film in November. And that character in that film, the main character, has literally that experience when he's in kind of a foreign land and there's a the, the, the road forks. Right. And right. He's trying to get away from, quote unquote, the bad people. Right. And he's trying to reconnect and re-meet the good people in a house somewhere where he's not exactly sure where it is. And he has to use his intuition. Does he take the road to the right or does he take the road to the left? And he takes the road to the right. And initially, I think he gets caught by the bad guys. Right. And he thinks I made the wrong decision. Right. But in life. There really is no wrong decision. Correct. There's just decisions that take you into different experiences that will still get you to your destination. If you can just trust and follow it through, that it's got something meaningful for you. Mm -hmm. So if you're somebody who doesn't believe that there's any meaning in any of your experiences, then it just seems like some, some experience or event that you have to endure to get through because life is about suffering and struggle. But when you're more awakened and you're in something that is more challenging in any given moment, you understand that there's some message for you. Mm -hmm. There's something there that's meaningful for you in that experience. And if you can ride it out long enough and trust it long enough, another breadcrumb will come. Another synchronicity will come. Another message will come. And it will get you to where you need to be. Right, exactly. But so it is really learning this language and it's learning to play with the language of the universe, which is an energy. Right. And when you can speak the energy and you can speak the language of the universe, that's when it gets to be more fun, even when there's challenge involved. Right. Right. Absolutely. Especially in Especially a way when, challenge, when, when is challenge is involved. And he talks about, you know, one, one technique is to, before you fall asleep at night, review, review your day, review what is happening in your life, right? Ponder the daily life questions, ponder what is challenging to you as you're falling asleep. And, and as you wake up, the goal is to see what presents itself to you when you wake up in the morning somehow. Something is dream, going, or in a dream, or, a dream, at or night. in a dream at night. You know, usually the answer is going to come in some form or another. Um, so he says that intuitions will show up if you let yourself doze off for a while in that twilight state. You know, between sleep and being awake, and oftentimes answers will come then. And then also when you're in a fully awakened state, you may have asked several questions to the universe or to yourself the night before, but when you're walking through your day. Pay attention to what comes your way, who crosses your path, what they say, you know? Right. Um, exactly. It can come in an email. It can come in a phone call. It can come in bumping into somebody in the grocery store, right? Even a stranger that you don't even know might have a message for you. Often, that's where it comes from. Well, and the other thing he talks about, which I so resonate with, is that is that oftentimes it's when you're doing something else, when your ego mind is engaged in something else, right. like you, taking a shower or you're talking on the phone to somebody or you're driving to work, right? Or you're right. exercising. You're you're kind of partly engaged in something else and you're... Your higher awareness is accessible. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's, when, that's when the hunches or the answers come right. oftentimes. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that, you know, I, I think that we could talk for a long time about this concept uh, that, that he talks about in the first insight. And again, it's a real jumping off point in, in a sense to, to larger conversations about, you know, the rest of the insights, which mm -hmm. are going to talk more about this spiritual awakening. But really, in the end, what, we're, what he's saying here and what we need to realize is that by paying attention, by, by awakening mm -hmm. to that we are being guided and that we are engaging in, a, in a, our life path with the universe, that if we can stay awake and stay alert, that everything is a sign, everything is communicating to us and everything is guiding us. And we want to invite you, the listener, to pay attention to your life to pay attention to your intuitive guidance and to pay attention to the people and situations and experiences that are crossing your path, that you're stepping into, because they all are meaningful and they all are communicating and they all are guiding you. Exactly.
They are. And I think 2020, uh, I've definitely gotten the message. I've certainly heard other people reference to reference it as well. The 2020 is a year of clearer sight, mm. right? It's a year of clear vision. And part of what we're going to be experiencing as a humanity and as a planet is seeing things more clearly. And it's like we've had this global astigmatism in our world to see our world and everything as separate. And as we awaken en masse together, more and more of us are waking up to this awareness that everything is connected and interconnected. And then we need all of our parts and we're going to need all of our talents to reset this planet to a more peaceful, harmonious, collaborative experience, right? for future generations to come and for our own lives today. And so 2020 is giving us this opportunity to become more awake, to start to like stretch and, you know, stretch meaning growing ourselves, growing our vision, growing our awareness. And, you know, a lot of people want the guarantee that if I grow, is it going to be okay? Like, am I going to be safe? And is everything going to be perfect? And is it all going to be happy? Growth doesn't really work that way. And so what we have to do is have a willingness to have experiences. And in the willingness to have experiences, we're going to learn. And we learn and we get better at listening better each time. So we become more of a master. We engage our mastery that exists inside all of us. The illusion and the astigmatism we have is that we're all separated and nothing's relevant and nothing's related and nothing's connected. But when you start to play in this world and you're willing to go through the experiences and some may be less than pleasant and some may be fabulous or somewhere in between, We're not here to have these like, you know, easy, everybody winning the lottery every single day, every single night and, you know, getting everything we want. That's not really doesn't produce the kind of growth that the soul, the spiritual essence inside us really wants. It wants to learn about itself and it has to learn and grow through experiences to engage that learning process. So when you understand more and more what feeds the soul, you start to step into the kinds of experiences and the way of thinking and the way of being and believing that supports the soul to grow. Right. So in 2020, we're going to be given many, and I mean many, opportunities to grow through the changes unfolding. An entire world's paradigm and belief system is coming into question. Is the way we've been living, thinking, believing, and acting towards ourselves and each other, is that working for us? As a planet, is that working for us? 2020 is going to give us some clear vision to really look at what happens to us when we live from such a separated place and a slumbering place. And we keep sleepwalking and thinking that these things are okay. And right, that the methods we have of interacting and in a relating from us and the people in our you know, inner circle of friends, in the larger local community we live in, in our countries and in the world, we have to really think about, is that working for us? And are we willing to see where the truth of our connection and interconnection wants to show itself to us? And we have to be willing to look at sometimes unpleasant things as well as the happy things as we're growing so that we can gain the lessons and we can grow through these experiences. And synchronicity is a great teacher. Uh. So I love that he talks about finding ways to engage that conversation with spirit, whether you call that a prayer, whether you have your car breaks down and you need to say, little help here, you know, what's going to help me with this flat tire right now, right? Or my phone battery's dead, right? I have no cell phone. So I need some support right? And you don't know. You think support might be somebody stopping and giving you assistance, but the support might might be that all of a sudden you remember that you have a spare tire in the back of your right. car, right? right? Or, you know, there's, there's a million ways that the universe can bring these synchronicities into your experience if you'll just invite them in. Yes. And a lot of the times, the reason if you're listening to this and you don't have a lot of these experiences in your life yet, it's because maybe you're not open to it. And oh, maybe- they're happening. They're just you know, they're just not being seen. Right. right? They're not being seen or 
and we haven't talked about this so much today, this might be from some of our earlier podcasts, but your energy could be putting out an, uh, that resistance. Yeah. This stuff doesn't work. No help is coming. I'm having a bad day. When you're focused on that, that's, that's a prayer to the universe. I want to have a bad day. This stuff doesn't work. Then the universe is going to follow that energy and that command to say, oh, she doesn't want to see synchronicity today, right? He doesn't want any assistance. He just told us that, right? Right. So when we open and we're willing to play with the universe and at least indulge a conversation or invite a conversation and certainly to engage a conversation with this living energy that creates meaning in every moment and in every breath, that's where that miraculous moment is for all of us. And it's happening all day, every day. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're somebody who either already believes in miracles and magic and synchronicity and meaningful coincidences. And you're saying, oh yeah, like I've had those experiences many times. Or you're somebody that's tuning in and saying, well, let's just listen to what they have to say. And this is all crazy. And this stuff isn't real. And either way, you're getting what you're asking for. So if you don't want the help of synchronicity in your life, you can also say that prayer. It still may be happening, but in the way that's proving to you that synchronicity doesn't work. If somebody doesn't believe in synchronicity and synchronicity still is at work, they'll bump into somebody else in the grocery line or hear some talk show host show up on their YouTube feed or whatever talking about how synchronicity doesn't work. And that will be the synchronicity <laughs> right. of synchronicity <laughs> the validation. not working right. for you. Right. right? <laughs> and so we always get what we ask for. And, you know, that's where I think we are invited in 2020. And as we walk through these next 12 months, and we're going to be going through this, these uh, Celestine insights, we get to sort of see what are we attracting? What are we attracting in our life? What are we calling out in our life? And are we noticing a shift in consciousness around us? Are we noticing through all the, um, you know, the static on the airwaves and all the global news and the local news and everything that's going on, where do you want to get your news from? Where do you want to be paying attention? For me, and I would say here at Whole Soul School and Foundation, our intention is that we are seeing more collaboration than we've ever seen before. We're seeing more communication and cooperation, kindness and compassion. That's what we're asking to see, right? Right. Here at Whole Soul School and Foundation. Absolutely. And we're asking to see more union of energies and coming together and convergences of energy that synchronize and show us and demonstrate that that's exactly what's going on on the planet. And so that's our intention. And that's what we expect to see more of this year. What are you asking to see more of this year? And are you open to see a planet start to work together, even though there's a lot of old energy still on the planet, in the old ways, still people fighting each other and divided and separated? We're going to see both of those options, those, those forks in the road. We can keep looking back at the old ways and stay, you know, in resonance with that and keep believing in that and see where that gets us. Or we can try this newer path where we start to say, I think it might be nice to try out cooperation. <laughs> that might actually be a little refreshing compared to what we've been seeing in our world for centuries. This did not just happen in the last 12 months, the division in our world today. It didn't just happen in the last 10 years or the last 100 years. It's been going on for a very, very long time. And if you pay attention to anything with the weather or uh, in human development and evolution, what you see is that things change over time in cycles. And it's time for a cycle of change. And 2020 is going to help spotlight that cycle of change. And I think there are many of us waking up en masse together becoming aware that there's more to us than, has, that, than meets the eye. There's more to us than we've been able to perceive before, but as a collective, as a humanity on this planet, there's a desire to see more now. There's a desire to return that we could be more than we think we are, that we may have more power and talents and gifts inside us than we've given ourselves credit for. And there might be more meaning in every interaction and connection we have with anything on this planet than we ever gave credit to. So a willingness to see in this new way is what creates that start. 
So we thank all of our listeners who join us in these conversations. This is the first of many for Whole Soul School and Foundation for the year 2020. We're going to be with you in every step of the way, walking through this year of clearer vision yes. together and opening our heart centers to this what's possible for humanity and all life here. Humans are not the only life form on this planet. I think a lot of the other life forms and a lot of the other, you know, the earth, the trees, the ocean the water, the streams, the lakes. I think we're ready to clean things up a little bit. And it's going to take seeing in this new way to find the solutions. So I want to thank everybody for joining us today and in our future podcasts. Um, Lacey, thank you for this awesome conversation mm-hmm. today. Thank you, always. And um, I, I invite people to join us uh, on Facebook and social media. We have those inspirational doses of quotes related to the themes each month there throughout the month. And then we have amazing poems and inspirations from Flower Diamond, who's just so generously gives of her time and shares this like poetic perspective of sight for the soul that's inviting you to see deeper. Mm. So when you look at her poems on our social media platforms, she's inviting you to look at the same things, but in a different way. Yes. I love that about yeah, the poems. Me too. And so we invite you to join us in our other podcast this month, which are going to include a Transformation Talks and, um, and another amazing podcast episode that we're still formulating. So stay with us. Global Spotlight. It likely is going to be Global Spotlight. We are keeping our friend Sue Wells, who I um, I have shows on Mind, Body, Spirit, Fitness with. Um, She often shares her amazing insights. She is currently in Australia Mm. with the fires going on. She's from New Zealand. And so her entire world is being touched Mm. by that experience. And so I just want to invite our listeners to send some healing, cooling, neutralizing, wet, uh, wet, uh, you know, loving light to Australia. And we hold all of that wildlife and all of those people in our hearts and our prayers and Sue Wells and her family as well. Um, and just to please keep, you know, please join us in this month's podcast. And, um, and we invite you to like, subscribe, and share this podcast on your social media and help spread the word about Whole Soul School and Foundation um, and our unique insights and teachings and inspirations. Please share about it. And visit our website at wholesoulschoolandfoundation.org and you can sign up there to receive our newsletter or to make a donation. Every donation is appreciated, and we are so grateful for our sustainer donors who really help to anchor this vision and the positive impact of Whole Soul School and Foundation in truly extraordinary ways. So thank you, everybody. We want to wish you a very happy new year in 2020. I think we're starting it off strong with this awareness, and I love the 12 Celestial Insights as a guidebook for this year. You know, you can certainly find James Redfield's work online or on Amazon, and then I will find some links for that and include that in the description section below. You can see the Celestine Prophecy film, and I will also uh, get a link for that where I, where you can see that, where you can watch that film for those inspirations as well. And, um, and we invite you into paying more attention to mysterious coincidences in your life and witnessing from a witness observer perspective of seeing shifts take place and people waking up. And I think it would be really, excuse me for interrupting, Marie, but I think it would, I'd love to invite our listeners, if they have a, a, a special, unique, profound, synchronistic experience. Or even a simple you know, synchronistic or, yeah. experience to share it in the comments section. Yeah. Right, to share it in the comments or certainly to email us at wholesoulschool at gmail.com. And we can spotlight that in a newsletter sometime, right? Right. So people sharing their 12 celestial insights as we grow through this year, we're happy for the engagement. So, um, and Whole Soul School and Foundation is going to continue to share these messages. We're here for the long term. We're like growing. It's, it's, you know, it's the long game. You know, you really have to see that change like this occurs over time. And we are participants in that positive change. And so, and the last thing I just wanted to bring to people's attention, when you give to Whole Soul School and Foundation, 
One of the things that we absolutely are going to do for each month of this year is that we as an organization are going to donate to other, you know, philanthropic missions that have boots on the ground that are actively supporting people whose lives have been impacted by incarceration. So when you give to us, you not only support us to create these podcasts and bring these positive messages and, um, and all the things that we do behind the scenes to, to, you know, to create this content for you and to enrich your life and the lives of others. But as you donate to Whole Soul School and Foundation, you will also be putting your energy that goes to support people who are trying to create a better life for themselves, their family, and this planet as well. Everybody needs the support now if we're going to all rise up and make this shift in collective consciousness. And who needs it the most in some ways are people that um, perhaps haven't been supported in their life or by the system that they're incarcerated in. And so we are going to actively be making those donations this year, each month of the year. And we set that intention and we are going to be doing that this year in addition to the other things that we do. And we're very grateful for any support you give. So Thank you for listening to us. Have a great month. We're going to be back with a couple more podcasts and, um, and we invite you to continue to join us and share about us and have a great, great January. Until we see you next time, blessings.